Uh, good morning. Thanks for being here. I've just been uh, receiving briefings and a review of our two uh, command posts for this emergency, first at Camp Murray and then here at, uh, in Thurston County. I think people would be impressed by the degree of organization and the communication of multiple layers of government uh, going on. I wanted to give you uh, some uh, developments uh, since we last spoke. Um, yesterday, we were successful in uh, uh, having the federal government remove a restriction on some of the COVID-19 testing that previous federal rules uh, were frustrating some people getting their testing done. Uh, previous federal rules, in effect, prohibited people with relatively mild, mild symptoms who had not been hospitalized from being tested. And uh, I spoke to the vice president yesterday and urged the federal government to remove those restrictions and also spoke to uh, Dr. Redfield, who heads the CDC last night. And the federal government, I'm pleased to say, has removed those restrictions. So we now have been given a green light to increase the, the frequency and protocols under which people can actually be tested. I know that people have been frustrated by that. So that, that was a good thing that the federal government did to give us the green light. Uh, we are continuing to build our capacity uh, under the understanding that we will need additional capacity for testing. As you know, uh, we increased uh, the, the public uh, lab for our state lab by about tenfold in the last two weeks. The University of Washington has now come online. They, they started their testing, I believe, two days ago. They are continuing to refine some of their activities, I'm told, to essentially dial in some of the parameters on their equipment. But uh, we're told that that will increase, uh, hopefully significantly, in, in the upcoming days. We do want to reiterate, though, that we anticipate the need for scale of testing that will require the private uh, sector to help out in this regard. We need to have the private labs to come uh, to the front lines on this. So we are talking, and the federal government is talking, to private labs to increase their capacity as rapidly as possible. Uh, we can use a lot of federal uh, coordination on that to be able to approve uh, their operations. So we're hopeful that the scale of that testing capacity uh, can continue to build it as rapidly uh, as possible. Uh, I'm going down this, uh, this morning to see our Maple Lane facility. The state has stood up a facility to help uh, people who need isolation to be cared for while they're in isolation. And I'll be going down to inspect those facilities this morning. Uh, we're pleased to see King County has uh, essentially announced an acquisition of a motel for that purpose and use essentially of some trailers or RVs on a short-term basis for the isolation um, uh, of these folks. Uh, so that's the, the most recent report. I know that there are concerns of folks for paying for this test. We are evaluating if there is some state or other assistance to provide uh, that for people who have difficulty in that regard. Uh, and we're evaluating uh, options in that regard. We're hopeful that there could be some relief for folks in this regard. We hope to be able to say more about that uh, in the days to come. Uh, I want to, in regard to the message we've all talked about, about our ability to all be leaders on this, particularly on washing our hands, uh, essentially covering our coughs, isolating ourselves if we do have symptoms. And the one issue, again, I want to repeat is the most important thing for Washingtonians right now is if you do have symptoms, uh, 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 need to stay home. You, you just can't go to work. It's, it's too risky at this point for everyone, your coworkers and your loved ones in the community at large. So we really need to do that. And I want to tell folks that I understand that that's harder for some people than others, both because of their job, jobs and because of their financial circumstances. I'm glad that the state of Washington has adopted really some of the best sick leave policies so that Many, many, if not most, Washingtonians will have sick leave available to them, and I'm glad that we've passed those laws in the state of Washington to help people in this regard. Uh, we have seen an uh, increasing number of events that are canceled with large groups of people, and as you know, we have encouraged people who are responsible for large gatherings to give consideration whether it really makes sense to carry those on right now or whether it's better to pause those at this moment. And right now we are deferring to the judgment of people in this regard for these organizations. We've seen any number of companies cancel some of their larger get-togethers. 
Uh, one of the political parties has canceled an event. Uh, and we think people should be giving serious consideration to that, and we're deferring to their judgment at the moment. Now, that may change. Uh, we have emergency powers in the state of Washington uh, to make decisions about that on a legal basis. That could happen. We have not made decisions in that regard. We are closely evaluating all of the science, and I am listening to our health department and our epidemiologists and some of the best, fortunately, we have some of the best scientists in the world today to help us make decisions uh, in that regard. Uh, I was just asked uh, by some of the personnel here about planning for schools. Schools t uh, at the moment are making uh, independent decisions in their leadership and their communities about the, their activities in schools. Uh, uh, we have been pleased that the schools have been thinking in advance if, if schools need to shut down how to provide educational opportunities online or otherwise. And that planning is going on in any number of schools to date to at least be prepared for trying to make that kind of decision. And we know that's going on. Uh, the health department, uh, our state health department, is helping school districts in that regard in, in making uh, decisions. I know people have asked why schools are not just sort of uniformly shut down today. And frankly, the reason is there's so many ramifications for families and businesses in that regard. Uh, that we have to consider. And those things are, are things we're considering very carefully on a daily basis to try to make the best decision we can for the health and safety and education of our children. Because frankly, that is so interruptive for a lot of people's lives. If you have a child that goes home from school and their, their parent is a nurse and can't go to the hospital because they have to care for the child then, these are things we need to think about. And we are thinking about those things. So in sum, we encourage people to give serious consideration about their uh, uh, get-togethers where there's a large number of people, and, uh, and we'll continue to evaluate this on a, on a daily basis. Uh, with that, it would be, John, would you like to add anything or not? I think that's well said. Okay, so thank you, John. Mike, Mike Pence is uh, the Secretary of State, the Vice President, will be traveling to Olympia tomorrow. Uh -huh. Uh, I assume I will be. I'm not sure it's been scheduled yet, but I assume I will be. I've talked to the Vice President three times now about this, and I'm pleased that our request, uh, uh, I assume that he was helpful in, in making the federal decision to remove these restrictions so we could do more testing, and I appreciate the federal government doing that, as well as Dr. Redfield, who responded to that. Uh, by the way, Dr. Redfield last night uh, committed to sending more uh, people to help in our contact tracing issues which is a very labor-intensive thing to, to trace people who have had contacts of people who have been confirmed with the virus. He told us last night he will be sending additional people to help our local health department in that expanding activity, uh, which we appreciate. Uh, and I've also talked to the Vice President about uh, the stockpile. As you know, we've made requests to uh, have access to the federal stockpile. We believe we're going to have a good result there, and also about opportunities to increase manufacturing of some of the medical uh, in, uh, the medical uh, equipment that we need. The federal government has emergency authority to essentially, in a sense, commandeer manufacturing capability. We've urged the federal government uh, uh, to think about that. So I know that we will uh, talk about extensively tomorrow with the Vice President about all of, all of these subjects, and I look forward to continuing that, uh, that work.